Welcome. We're going to learn music theory today, once again. Today's lesson is lesson number two, the staff. In lesson one, we talked about musical notes. We write musical notes on a staff. A staff is a ledger. You may remember that in the old days, before computers, and even now, accountants would use a ledger, which is just a big, long group of lines, one on top of the other, and accountants would crunch numbers. It's called a ledger, L-E-D-G-E-R. Ledger. We read and write musical notes on the ledger as well. This orange line is called a ledger line. And you know what a ledge is. A ledge is a cliff. So the way I remember this is I imagine there's a man here. And he goes over the ledge. So this is called a ledger line. We put notes on ledger lines. I'm going to place that note right on the ledger line. So when you see that note on the ledger line, what you can hear in your mind is, that's that note right there. Now I'm going to put two notes, one after the other. And this is what you're going to hear in your mind. Or what somebody's going to play. I could draw the stem down, or I could draw the stem up. It makes no difference at all. It's the same sound that you would hear. That's what it sounds like if I play it on the piano. And if I fiddle a little bit, this is what it sounds like. The note is written directly on top of the line. But I didn't have to do that. I could write the note above the line. So that the note is sitting on top of the ledger line. Now you'll notice the third note is on the line, and the fourth note is above the line. That makes it a new note. It makes it a higher note, a higher tone. So it's a higher note. So if the note sits on the line, and the next note is on the space above the line, the next note comes back to the line, it sounds like this. Remember, this is a ledger line. We call this a ledger line. I'm going to write a note below the ledger line. So now this is what it sounds like. And maybe your mind starts to feel that you want to come, we say, to come back home to the original note. This note gets anchored in your mind. I'm not certain I actually know how to, how to draw an anchor, quite honestly. I spent a lot of time in the desert. We didn't have anchors in the desert. But you get the idea. I can draw a staff. So, this is... We're going to draw a staff. So this would sound like this. above the line, under the space above the line, the tones are higher, the notes are higher, and your mind can process that. When the note goes below the line, the tones are lower, the notes are lower, and your mind can process that. Now there's far more many notes that we use in the musical lexicon than just three notes, so we need more lines. So here I've drawn two lines, and that gets us one, two, three, four, five notes. Now I haven't drawn them in, and I haven't given them stems. I'm just going to let the note heads themselves represent the notes. And this way I can actually assign these notes to any letters that I want. What I'll do is maybe 
You remember from the first lesson, the musical alphabet consists of the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we'll make this C. That would make the next note D. The next note would be E. The next note would be F. And the next note would be G. Now the only reason those notes are the letters they are is because I assigned the first note to C. I could have assigned anything to it. I could have done anything I wanted. But that's what I did. And so the other ones have to follow in relation to the first. So this is what this would sound like. Beautiful. And if I sing it, it sounds like C, D, E, F, G. Beautiful. I like to do a lot of singing. Now that can get us a lot of songs. But really, we need more ledger lines if we want to have the full expansiveness of musical realm that we want to hear. Let's add a third ledger line. That gets us more notes. You can probably already guess that's going to be B. That's B, and that's going to be A. We have a almost an octave. You remember the word octave? It's eight notes from one letter to its counterpart. Eight notes higher. And it would be great if we could hear this next note, wouldn't it? But in order to hear that note, we're going to have to write it on the board so we can represent that note in the physical space on the board, that's going to be A. So you'll see we have gone from A to A. And we can just keep adding ledger lines more and more and more. There's four ledger lines, I've taken off the notes if I add a fifth ledger line, this becomes what we call a staff. Just like my walking cane. It's a staff. Five ledger lines equals staff. This is the musical staff. Very important. We put the notes on the musical staff. This is where we can understand music, where we can apply music. Where we can write music down. If I have a song that I have in my head that I've composed, I can write it down so that other people can play it long after I've departed. With this musical staff alone, we don't know what the letter names are. So I can throw a letter right here. I can throw a note right there. But if I look at that, I don't know what to play on the piano. I don't know which note that is. I don't know what string to bow on the violin or the string instrument. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the letter G. I'm going to put it on the second line up in the staff, the letter G. The scroll of the G goes through the second line. And by doing that, I'm assigning that line to the letter G. So I just made that note letter G by writing a G here. And that's what we do in music. We write the letter G. That's called a clef. The G clef. Clef is the French word for key. And as you know, at the bottom of a map, they give you the key, which tells you information about the map. So we call this a clef, which is the key, which gives you information about what the notes are on the musical staff. So this is the G clef. Now in the old days, they had a lot of time on their hands. Old days. Who am I? In the old days, they had a lot of time on their hands, so they, they would write really fancy Gs. So this is, a, this is what we call print. 
It's a G. We're all familiar with this. This is cursive. Okay, that's a G. We're all familiar with that. Unless you're a millennial, you might not know that. Cursive, and then we have calligraphy. I was never a good speller. I don't know if there's two L's or one L, so... Don't bother writing any comments about it. And the calligraphy is looks like that. That's a really fancy G. That's the letter G. So we're going to take that fancy G. We're going to put a fancy line through it right there. It's very important that the line cross through and the scroll cross around the G. That's how we know the second line up is G. That's how that works. I'm going to get rid of the tail here. We're just going to have our... Uh, G there. Now the G clef is often referred to as the treble clef. So you might ask, well, which is it? Is it the G clef or is it the treble clef? And the answer is both. See, musicians like to make things very complicated, so we come up with two names for every single thing there is because that makes things complicated, so we're happy that way. You can either call it a G clef or the treble clef, and you'll hear it referred to as one or the other, depending on who's talking or what they feel at the moment. Anyway, that treble clef, which is the G clef, assigns the second line up to the note G, and so that must mean the note before it is F. The note before that has to be E. The note before that is D. Now, if you remember, the musical alphabet ends at G, so then we flip back around to A. So the space above the G will be A. The line above the A will be B. The space above the B will be C, and so forth ad infinitum. So these orange lines are called ledger lines, and five ledger lines makes up a staff. And we put the musical notes on the staff, and the way we know what the musical notes are assigned to is we put the clef on the staff. Now once we put the treble clef on the staff, it becomes the treble staff. That's how we know what these notes are, and that's standard in music, so you'll have to know that, regardless of what instrument you play. Even if you play a bass instrument, you should know the treble clef. So that's the staff. Thank you all very much, and we'll see you in the next lesson.